Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So behind me I got a Dodge Journey. Now you'll see this in a separate video on the heater lines being installed on it. This car came in having a leak. It was leaking at the heater lines. We went ahead and replaced them. Now I'm going to do a separate video, which it's this video that I'm doing right now, on how to bleed out the cooling system on this car. Now I have another video on how to bleed out a cooling system. That was just on a regular Chevy sedan. On this particular car, this one has front and rear heat and AC. It's a little bit of a different process, so I just figured I'd cover it in a different video. And in case I missed something on the first video, I'll cover it in this one. So with that said, let's go ahead and begin. Let's start bleeding out our cooling system. So the first step that you're going to want to do to bleed out your cooling system, uh, whatever repair you did, go ahead and finish it up. You're going to want to take off your uh, radiator cap or the cap that you're going to be filling up from now. This car has this right here dead center, and this is not directly linked to the radiator. This is actually a tube. It's the upper radiator hose where they decide to put this, guys. And then we're going to be using our coolant funnel, our bleeding funnel. You're going to want to go ahead and find the right adapters. In this case, this car uses these adapters. And what we're going to do is go ahead and adapt it to the radiator. Uh, once you adapt it, just go ahead and make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're going to be taking our funnel, and we're going to be installing it right up top. And once you install it up top, what you're going to want to do is start filling up the coolant. All right, guys, so I've started filling up my coolant. And what you want to do is just pour it directly into the funnel. Now, this process takes a while. Um, it could take anywhere between 5 or 10 minutes. It takes its time because it's going to start gulping and getting the air out and filling it up with some coolant. So once I have the system filled up, I'll come back with you guys and show you the rest of the process. Okay guys, so we went ahead and we filled our cooling system. It took a while, plus I had to take a phone call from a customer. So it's probably been like 20 minutes. And this thing has leveled off. Now I got my coolant filled to about right here on the bottle. You guys can see that it's kind of pinkish orange here. Uh, this does take the Chrysler pink coolant. Make sure you guys use the correct coolant for your application, guys. Uh, once you have it at this bottom edge here, that's where I line it up, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and go inside the car and you're going to want to change up some heater settings. Now, I'm going to explain this to you and I'll actually show you guys. The way you want to do it is you want to set your front heater to the maximum degrees that it can go up, meaning the hottest setting it can be in. And you also want to do the same exact thing for the rear heat unit. Uh, what you're doing when that happens is you're opening up the electronic valves to allow the coolant to flow through the heater core. Now we just drained the system and the heater cores in the front and the rear of the car do function with coolant. So when you set it to the highest heat mode setting, that motor opens up, it allows the coolant to kind of circulate and loop around and it'll take any air that's inside of those systems along with it. So that way you guys can get the maximum bleeding of air out of here. If you guys don't do this step and you do you know, leave it, let's say, on AC mode or don't check. If you have an air bubble inside of your heater core, it won't make itself apparent until winter rolls by and you basically turn on your heater and then your car starts overheating. Sometimes you'll hear like a waterfall noise inside your dashboard or circulating throughout the car. So just make sure you don't skip this step, guys, because if you do do that, like I said, sometimes it could take until winter time for it to show up. Sometimes it could even show up right away. The air pocket will get loose and it'll just ruin your day. You'll be stranded somewhere with an overheating car. And I definitely don't want that for my customers, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to take you inside the car and show you guys what I'm referring to. Okay, guys, so now we're inside the car. What you're going to want to do first is go ahead and turn the ignition to the on position. Don't turn on your engine just yet. Just turn it on to ignition on. Now I'm going to let this thing stop beeping, which there you go, it finally did. And now you may have heater controls like this. This one has a radio display too that does climate. So what you're going to want to do is go into your front heat settings. Now this car has front heat and rear heat. And what you're going to want to do is go ahead and just set your driver temperature to the maximum heat. Now let me turn off my light on my camera so you guys can see this better. Turn it up on the driver's side to maximum heat. Do the same thing for the passenger side. And once you do that, you're going to want to go to your rear climate. And you are going to want to make sure that that is also in the highest heat setting. Now, once you have it in the highest heat setting, you go to your rear mode here for how fast your blower blows. You want to leave that on setting number one. And once you've done that, you're going to go back to the front and you're going to do the same thing. Make sure you leave it on heater mode number one. The reason being is you want to have the heat flowing through, but you don't want to have your heater 
mode on high so the fan is cooling off the coolant because the whole goal that we're going to be doing to bleed off the system is we're going to get the coolant hot enough so the thermostat can open up and if your blower inside your car is at its highest maximum setting it's actually helping cool the coolant down which is what we're not wanting we're trying to get it hot enough for the thermostat to open so it can circulate through the whole system so you definitely want to make sure that you leave your setting on one one thing i also like to do just for me checking the heat is i set it on the mode to your face only so only these top vents go and not anywhere else you want to make sure that your heater and your ac are also off you do not want to have your fans running when this happens because as the car warms up and the coolants get up to operating temperature and the thermostat opens up, the computer will normally signal the fans to turn on. And when the fans turn on, guys, what will happen is it will indicate to you that, hey, the coolant got hot enough, the thermostat has opened, and now I'm cooling my coolant in the radiator that's hot and that tells me that i've got a full loop of my coolant from start to end and normally you're going to want to wait and you're going to have the fan come on maybe two or three times and that'll pretty much ensure that you got all the air out so let's go back outside and i'll show you guys the next step all right guys now that we've got our heater setting set in the correct setting and our coolant is topped off here to this bottom edge what i'm going to do is go ahead and start the car and i'm going to let it run now i'm going to cut the video off and i'm going to do this off video i'm all i'm going to do is start the car i'm going to let it run i'm going to keep adding coolant in here as the bubbles come out this coolant level will drop so i'll be paying attention to it and making sure my level stays about right here just above that line and while the engine is running it's going to get hot and hot and what you're going to be looking for is for the cooling fans to come on. You're going to want to hear the fans come on or visually see them. And once that happens, guys, I'll kind of bring you guys back in and I'll show you what's happening and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, so my car has been running for about a half hour now. And if you guys can see, the coolant has started bubbling out and it's actually getting really hot. My fan kicked on one time. It got up to about 218 before the fan kicked on on the temperature scale. And you guys can see it's bringing up some muck that was inside the engine. Now I told this customer let's do a coolant flush and flush out the system. He declined to do the flush portion. He just said just refill it once you do the repair. Therefore we're going to get a little bit of stuff in here because I could get only about 90% of the coolant out when I did the repair. So the system still has some coolant left in it. Now what I find is all the impurities will come out top here as you guys can see in the funnel and you guys can see all the air is coming out slowly. What I'm going to do next is just let it run for a couple more minutes and I'm going to wait for that fan to kick back on and once these bubbles stop bubbling up here and it dissipates I'll know that all of my air is out of the system. As long as you guys can see air bubbles coming out of here it means you still have some trapped air in there. I normally go around three or four van fan cycles guys so You'll want to have the thermostat open up quite a few times just to get all the air out to make sure. So I'll bring you guys back in once that's all done. Alright guys, so my cooling system has been bleeding for about another 15 or 20 minutes now. The fan has come on several more times since the last clip. And just to kind of show you guys, there are no more bubbles bubbling up in my coolant. Now that the system is fully bled, guys, what I like to do is I grab my upper radiator hose and what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze it as I put my plunger in. The reason why I do this is it helps push any extra coolant that's up top here inside my reservoir so that way when I pull out my reservoir I don't wind up making a mess and it'll kind of vacuum seal it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and push that down and I'm going to go ahead and set my plunger in and just slowly pull off my reservoir here that i'm using to fill it up or my funnel i should say now i'm not going to reuse this coolant guys i'm going to go ahead and dump this out uh, we do have a reservoir bottle that we have to fill up but we're not going to be reusing this coolant because this one has all the impurities in it that came up from out of the engine like i said this customer did not want to do a full flush he just wanted to fill it up after the repairs and bleed it out uh, so i'm just going to do what the customer asked once you have the funnel out of the way you're going to want to go ahead and take off your adapter and what I like to do at this stage is I take my coolant and this is Chrysler Pink guys. Um, my bottle may say Motorcraft on it just so you guys know like this is a Motorcraft bottle. The only reason why I use this bottle is because it's nice thick and sturdy. I don't have any other container to get my coolant from but I do have specific coolants and drums for all types of vehicles. I have about three or four different varieties. In this case this is the Chrysler Pink. 
I'm just reusing this bottle to dispense it. So I'm not putting Ford coolant inside of a Chrysler Dodge product, guys. Just be mindful of that. I mentioned that in my last video too. So now what I did was I filled up my cap here all the way to the top. And what I'm gonna do is take my cap. Now there's gonna be a little bit of spillover possibly here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my cap on. Once I have that all done, what you're gonna wanna do is find where your reservoir is, which in our case, it's right here. Now, let me get these lights out of the way, guys, because these will make it very difficult for you guys to see with all the glare. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to top this guy off at the full mark. So our full mark on this thing is right about there. So I don't really have too much to fill up here, but I will be filling it up. Now, I did fill this up with fresh coolant before we did the flush. Uh, I put about half of what it needed in there, guys. I took my bottle out and I suctioned it. That way there was no impurities. This tank is usually the one that will catch all the impurities. Um, so just make sure that you empty this. Now one little tip that I like to do, maybe you guys uh, won't like this or you'll disagree with me, is I'm already at the full mark for this bottle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to throw just a little bit more. Now I'm not going to overfill the bottle all the way to the top. I'm just going to add a little bit extra and the reason why is we just serviced the cooling system. Even though we got the air bubbles out, there may still be an air bubble or two trapped in there, guys. And what will happen is if that air bubble goes to your recovery tank, uh, it'll come out. It'll be air. It kind of goes to the top and floats away. And then what will happen is your reservoir is going to go down on fluid. It's going to be not at the full mark when it displaces the air for the coolant. So you always want to be mindful after a coolant flush to make sure you check this out or after you bleed your cooling system after a day or two you may want to check your level when the car is cold just to make sure you're at full now this car is not my car so i'm not going to be able to recheck it in a few days and i'm certainly not going to make the customer come back here so my method has always been i fill up a little bit more inside of this reservoir so that way when the air comes out the cooling level goes down it's already overfilled by a little bit so it'll stay at the full mark and that's just a little tip for you guys uh, that's the way that i do it and it always works for me all right, guys, so we are all set and done with this car. Now, after you've capped off your radiator and filled out your overflow bottle, just clean up any mess that you might have made. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this whole engine bay. As you guys can see, there's some crusty stuff here and dirt all over. So I'm going to go ahead and clean out the whole engine. I have a video on that. It's on my uh, channel, so just check it out if you're interested in that. But other than that, this car is all set. This is how you do a coolant bleed procedure on a car that has front and rear heat and AC systems. So with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this helps you out. I do want to say please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. It does help my channel grow, and I really appreciate it when you guys, you know, throw a comment here or there or like the videos and even subscribe so that way you guys can see my videos as soon as they roll out. So hopefully you guys have a wonderful day, and I will catch you guys on the next repair.